Bucks, baby! Welcome to Buckets Live. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network. I'm joined by Andrew O'Connor Watts. He's on Twitter and in the Action Network app at NBA Watts. I'm also joined by Michael Fiddle. You can catch him in the Action Network app and on Twitter at Michael Fiddle's Picks. There we go, Fiddle's Picks. This is Buckets Live. We're reacting on Sunday live here to the end of the NBA regular season. The playoffs are set the bracket is complete we are locked in and so we will break down this is forward looking we're not gonna like react to like what happened today because honestly a lot of nonsense happened today i'm looking at you Cavs. uh we're gonna get into the the playoff matchups we're gonna talk about series prices we're gonna react to the game one lines we're gonna talk about how to approach these series all of this is gonna be very much like hey first glance okay because we didn't have the matchup so there's a lot more work to be done. As a reminder, we're going to do all sorts of stuff this week. We've got playoff series previews on what will now be Clippers versus Mavericks, Cavs versus Magic tomorrow on Monday. So you can check that out in the feed. Uh, look, Be on the lookout for that. On Tuesday, we will have the three sixes. So we will have the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Indiana Pacers. And we will have the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Phoenix Suns on Thursday we'll do the two sevens on Friday night you'll have the one eights we will also have play in tournament game best bets episodes if you've got best bets for those games though I want you to hit me in the chat here on Action Network live in the chat here on youtube.com slash the Action Network we will have buckets live this week I will have more details on when that's going to be uh with you on tomorrow's show all right uh want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by Bet MGM use bonus code Action when signing up to get $1,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. For new users in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Bonus code ACTION will give new users in North Carolina $150 in bonus bets for betting just $5. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or over. Gambling problem. All 1-800- gambler all right lots to get to the bracket set to go over how this shook out the boston celtics are the one seed we've known that for about a million years the two seed is the new york knicks after the bucks got absolutely stomped on by the magic three seed is the bucks it would have been the now four seed Cavs, but the Cavs literally turned the car the fuck around in the third in the fourth quarter presumably to avoid playing the winner of sixers heat but now they're in the Celtics side of the bracket. Uh, ba- the basketball gods are going to be unhappy with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, the s- five seed Orlando Magic, the six seed Indiana Pacers, the seven seed Philadelphia 76ers will host the eight seed Miami Heat, Heat in the first play in tournament game. In the second tournament game, it'll be Bulls Hawks for whoever I guess get gets to, to play and try and, and be the team that gets swept by Boston. Um, and then in the other side of the bracket, the Thunder take care of business versus the Mavericks, who were like, respect to the Mavericks, who did not like mess around. There was no like question about what Dallas was going to do. Like Dallas was like, nope, nope, nope. You, D- Denver can go on over to that other bracket. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and get the uh, OKC this win. So we don't have to have Denver in our side of the bracket. OKC gets the one. The Nuggets get the win. They get the two. The Wolves lose the, to the Suns in just a devastating loss for their playoff hopes. So now they're three. They don't get home court versus the Nuggets. They have to face the Suns again, who have absolutely stomped on them. It's bad. Clippers face Mavericks. And then in the play-in tournament, you'll have seven seed Pelicans versus eight seed Lakers. Oh no, Pels. And then the Kings will play the Warriors in the final game. We'll talk about all this and more. Let's start. I think the most the most interesting series for me is definitely, um, we've talked about Clippers Mavericks. Again, we'll do that series tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit about it here today. I want to start, though, Fiddle. Let's start with with Bucks pacers This has not been a good matchup for Indiana, for the Milwaukee Bucks, rather, this season. Um, They lost the season series to the Pacers. The Pacers absolutely ran them out the building with offense in that in-season tournament game. Um, They won the season series. They have a pick-and-roll combo that can attack the Bucks' porous defense on the interior. They have shooting. They have as much offense as Milwaukee does. Defense is obviously the question mark here. Um, 
for the line on this one series money line bucks minus 275 pacers plus 220 and dropping because they've been taking money game one the bucks are minus three and a half versus the pacers with an over under hearkening back to the the halcyon days of december at 239 and a half fiddle what's your first reaction the bucks pacers uh, I just want to click pause and I want to wait for confirmed news on Giannis. I want yeah. to wait for the calf injury to heal throughout the week of the play in tournament. Good thing they will not have to take any action. And I want to remind people that although the Indiana Pacers kind of smacked the Bucks in the mouth this season, that was pre Doc Rivers joining the Milwaukee Bucks and tightening up their defense a bit. And that was pre Pascal Siakam joining the Indiana Pacers and kind of changing their identity of their small ball run and gun offense. So I actually am leaning back the Bucks, wait for the market to settle a bit, try and time the Giannis injury news appropriately. But I think I'm going to be heavily on the Bucks here is my first intuition. Uh, the Pacers used to destroy Milwaukee at the fact that they have no point of attack defense and can't stop anything along the perimeter. Now the Indiana Pacers don't play overly a perimeter oriented game. So I think this is going to lead experience uh, star power Milwaukee. I'll probably be laying them minus three or three and a half at game one. And then we'll evaluate the series price as we find out news with Giannis at 275. I probably just wanted to play game to game and roll it over. Okay. Uh, Michael on his podcast, which you can find wherever you get podcasts is it's really good. The advantage sports betting podcast. He broke down like an entire segment this week on talking about how you don't want to plan to hedge later in a series. You don't want to bet something up front with like, Ooh, I'll take this now. And then later I will bet the other side of it. Uh, I thought it was a really good conversation. You should listen to that episode. It's got a lot of really smart stuff in there about how to approach playoff betting. Um, I've gone ahead and I'll just go ahead. I, I bet the Pacers here at plus, I got 230. Um, for me, this is more about like, look, I can't have done all of this work this year and been like, I do not believe in the Bucks. I do not buy it with the Bucks. I do not think that they can, that they have the chemistry. I don't trust their defense, their best perimeter. Like they had to put Patrick Beverly in the lineup in order to be able to shore up their defense. Dame does not look right. He looked again bad today. I understand the Pacers can't defend. I will also say this, the Pacers record versus really good teams is excellent. They have a, a win profile that immediately made me really interested in them because if I'm looking to play division futures, regular season stuff, I need you to have a consistent win profile. I need to be able to know that on a Tuesday night in December or in uh, March that you're going to take, take care of business versus the Raptors. That's not Indiana. Indiana will screw around and they did screw around and that's why they're in the spot and not a spot higher or two spots higher because their record versus the good teams was great because they have so much offense and they have so many weapons. Also, not going to lie, really, really like Rick Carlisle in a coaching matchup here versus Doc Rivers. Carlisle gets to be creative here. Like Carlisle gets to be like, hey, let's we're not going to run one five. We're not going to run one five pick and roll. We're not going to do that. I don't want to bring Brooke Lopez into this action. We're going to space him out with Miles Turner. And I'm going to make him cover ground. And we're going to run Tyrese Halliburton 1-4 pick and roll down your throat. That's terrifying. If they can, they're going to be able to space Brooke Lopez to the corner. When you take those rim protectors that hold up these defensive structures and you're just like, nope, you don't get to do that. Like, you just don't get to sit in the paint. I know you want to. You don't get to unless you're going to cross match. And then you're going to have a really bad matchup on the other side with Pascal Siakam. It, it, unless you do this, then there's a real problem for you. So for me, like, I think that, look, I, I will look and see when the series price on the win spread comes out. I'm probably going to want um, Pacers plus one and a half, Pacers plus two and a half. Like, there will, I probably will play Escalators on this series. Um, I like this matchup very much for them. I can't be, the entire year be like, I don't believe in the Bucs. There are no bet for me. I have real questions about them. And then get here with a team in Indiana that I've liked all year in big marquee matchups and be like, oh no, I'm scared because the Pacers are new to the playoffs. I can't do that. Like either I'm in on the Bucs or I'm out on the Bucs. Watts, what you got for me? Uh, that was a spot on impression of me, by the way, at the end there. Um, I am a little bit hesitant about the Pacers, although my initial reaction was like, I'll take all your Bucks money. I mean, you, you, I think you saw the slack. Um, but, you know, Michael brings up a good point. This is a different team than we've seen them play uh, for the for Indiana, right? So see, no Siakam, no Heald, which is actually kind of huge 
Um, their ability to shoot the basketball did kind of dip with the departure of Heald. Um, and it kind of messed with their identity a bit. Um, I do like what you're saying about their record against great teams. To me, I do kind of, I, I probably will take the Pacers on the series just because I don't think it's a great price. I think it's a mispriced. I think it should be closer in the series than to, what did you say, two plus 230? 220 like, and dropping right now, but there were two yeah. things in the market. Yeah, so I mean, I just think this should be a little closer to like high one, uh, high 100s. And I'll probably take it down to like plus 190, plus 180. Again, you mentioned this in the beginning. We're still kind of going through everything, doing the research. But we, you know, they're four, the Pacers are four and one against the Bucks this season. And none of those games had Pascal. So I kind of am, I'm a little bit in between you guys. I, I really do. I really want to bet the Pacers and probably will bet the Pacers, but there is a little bit of of pause for me, just given the shakeup uh, roster wise. You have to believe that the Bucks have like this playoff gear that they've been saving and that they're going to hit. I know that Giannis didn't play today, but here's a question: Where the fuck was that today versus the Orlando Magic? Dope. Um, the counter argument to this is going to be: If I'm going to sit here and I'm going to be like, "Hey, how about how good Indiana is versus the good teams in the league?" By the way, um, the Pacers versus teams that are top 10 in offense, which the Bucs are, are 18 and nine straight up this season with the number one offense at a 124 offensive rating versus the top 10 offensive teams this season. They love matching up with an offensive team and the Bucs are definitely not a defensive team this season. Um, Phil, I want to ask you about the Giannis thing. Okay, let's, we'll get an update from practice. That's going to be the first question asked tomorrow or Tuesday when they do a practice with the Bucks. is they'll be like, okay, can we get an update on Giannis? And it will be nothing. It'll be like, he's progressing. We don't know. If you get an indication, if a report comes out from Adrian Wojnarowski, Shams Wojnarowski, Shams Trania, <laughs> or Chris Haynes, one of the big three, about Giannis uh, is ramping up and there's optimism he could play. Is this a situation where you're like, I will take the lesser number because I have to be absolutely sure. Or are you going to read the market in terms of when that, when that news comes out and try and get ahead of that line movement and ahead of maybe sharp betters coming in and betting it in the anticipation of Giannis coming back? I think I'm going to try and get ahead of it. Uh, I think I'm going to try and bet it from a game to game perspective, not in a series way. I don't think I'm going to touch a buck series price because I don't ever think it's going to come below minus 200, even with the steam on the buck side. So while the Pacers might go down to plus 175, we're not getting a bucks sub minus 225 in the next few days. So I'm going to wait on this Giannis news, Matt. If it weren't for Giannis having a ring and two MVPs and a season where there's probably four great MVP candidates, we'd all be realizing that this is the best Giannis has ever played. So you say Bucks have another gear as they reach the playoffs. I think they have one of the best players in the world right now at his absolute apex. So the way that Giannis is obviously his body is just, you know, he's Thor essentially out there. So as long as he is able to be that Iron Man and that superhero on the floor, mentally his game has caught up to what he is physically capable of doing. I do think having five games against the Indiana Pacers when you add in the play-in tournament this this season helps a guy like Giannis figure it out. I do think that Brook Lopez matchup is going to be very interesting to watch, but I think Giannis is just going to have another gear to kind of lay down the hammer here. Uh, I heard what um, Watt said about healed in this one, and I, I get it. A lot, so much of this for me is I've watched the Pacers in key games be able to go to different actions and get different guys involved. So a lot of this is like, is Buddy Heald an exceptional shooter? Absolutely. Does he help the Philadelphia 76ers? 100%. <laughs> Am I like, <laughs> oh no, the Pacers are down a shooter. What are they going to do? How are they going to generate off? No, no, not worried about that. Now look, the opposite of this is like, hey, Halliburton in that uh, IST game showed that if you get really super physical with him, he can get taken out. Okay. Teams that have big physical defenders can body and bully Tyrese Halliburton. Malik Be Beasley. Are, are you going to put Giannis 
on him because your are, weak side Denver weak side rotation is going to be trash. Arlington's finest, Pat Connington. Uh, yeah. What about Chris Middleton coming back, Matt? How does that impact? Because he's really seemed to get in his groove in the last few weeks. He's been off injured throughout the season, but when he's played, he's looked really fluid and good out there. So I do think Middleton is kind of a caveat that we have not applied to the early season matchups between Bucks and Pacers and some of the Bucks struggles this season. But my problem, okay, so here's the thing. My problem is if you look at it, um, the way that the Pacers won these games, here's like the totals, 126 to 124 Pacers, 128 to 119 Pacers, they lost 126 to 140. And there will be a game like that this series, by the way. Like the Pacers will give up 150 points in a playoff game at some point in the series. Uh, 122, 113, that's a win on January 1st. And then 142, 130 on January 3rd, that's another win. So we've got 126, 128, 126, 122, 142. So like the Pacers have, have been pretty consistent here. I know you're asking about mid. Um, I think one of my issues with mid is basically... Yes, when he's healthy and they when they have the whole core together, and this is why like their record versus the very good teams. If I'm wrong and the Bucks make it out of this this series, then it's going to be like okay, like they got out of the muck, they got out of the spiral, they won a playoff series despite everything. Maybe they can get this to a conference finals, and who knows, right? They're like Giannis is the best player in the series. You can win that. Uh, to be honest with you, though, like I don't have any faith that Mid's going to be able to stay on the floor, man. Like at some point we got to accept that like mid just can't, he cannot stay healthy. Like look at the games played and it's always something and it's repeated and they are having to manage him so much. So a lot of it's going to be scheduled. We'll see when the the series schedules come out, what they look like and how often they're going to play. But I do think that's like going to have to be part of this conversation as well. Um, Do you guys have anything else on this you want to hit? I just think that the playoff racket broke perfectly for the Bucks right now. If you're going to you're, you're gonna want to get the Pacers. Like if there's one team the Bucs are want to get up against and prove something against, it's going to be this Indiana Pacers team. And then to get the winner of Knicks who went at, went out and took that two seed versus 76ers and be on the opposite side of the Celtics bracket and then mm-hmm. avoid getting that 2-7 matchup where you might get the 76ers or the Heat in the first round. It broke nicely for the Bucs who are dealing with Giannis and then have to work him back because they're all going to be fired up to play the Pacers and hopefully Giannis gets back to full strength Uh that's kind of my party thoughts on it. The Bucks want the Knicks to win. That's it. That's that two seven, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That's their ideal. They want the Knicks in the second round. They don't want Sixers or Heat. If the Heat were to beat the Knicks and then Milwaukee, oh god. Uh, I will just say I am really worried about. Like again, I feel I feel good about Pacers. I'll do the film work and we'll do a full series review and maybe I'll come back and be like, hey, might have been been too impetuous. I'm going to have to go back on the other side of this. I want to get the prize because I do think the Pacers are going to take money and. I was having a conversation with Brandon yesterday about, you know, can you be too, can you be too narrative resistant? Because like, I think that's a thing that you can do. And he was mentioning it with regard to me in terms of MVP stuff where I'm so narrative resistant and the narrative definitely right now is like Milwaukee kind of sucks. Right. Um, In this instance, I don't know. I think that there's the, my problem is that everything with the Bucks reasserts the stuff that I've seen all season. I kept waiting for the moment when I would watch the Bucks and be like, "Oh, okay, like their chemistry, like defensive coordination." There was a play today. They were they were running zone, and Brooke closes out on a corner shooter, and there's no help behind him, none. And you're gonna be like, "Well, Giannis, okay, but like Giannis isn't gonna play every minute." I have a lot of a lot of concerns about this one, but we'll get to some more of them. We'll have uh, game one best bets by the end of the week. Um, I will tell you that right now, Bucks minus three and a half, probably actually, I you know, spread wise, model likes Bucks, so it's like, how do I deal with that versus my series analysis? I'll kind of take a look at it, and we'll talk about that later in the week. Uh, let's go to Cavs Magic, which uh, welcome to the NBA TV series of the year. Uh, What the fuck are the Cavs doing? Uh, they okay, so so they've got a lead through most of the game on the Hornets, and they clearly had this game in hand. And then they literally turned around and like they went the other way, where they put in Pete Nance and Imani Bates, and like it wasn't throwing again. Teams like the players tried to win, but the Cavs put out the roster, the lineup that they knew would lose them the game, and it was very clear that the at the time that they did this, Knicks were down, I think, eight to the Bulls. And so they had an opportunity there to be able to like maybe 
uh, they didn't have as much of an opportunity in terms of like where, it, of how it was going to work out and all these types of things. Um, if they had just won this game, then they would have been in a much better position because with the Knicks winning, the Cavs would have moved, moved to the three seed. They would play the Pacers, which I don't know if they, you want it more than you want Orlando. Fine. That's okay. If you want, if you feel better about the rock fight, but like now you're on the Celtic side of the bracket. You got to play Boston eventually. I do think we go too far in like avoiding sides of the bracket because it's like, look, you're going to have to play them eventually. I just don't get like turn it like to me. That's a that is a very basketball gods are, are going to remember this kind of shit. Um, but series price Cavs magic at bet MGM Cavaliers are minus 195 magic plus 155 in game one. The Cavs are minus four and a half with an over under of a of a smashing 208 and a half. The three, six and four, five. Could not be more different. Watts, what do you think about Cavs Magic? Um, surprised to find myself not as much on the Magic uh, as I thought I'd be. I've been a huge fan of this Magic team all season. They're probably the team I've bet the most this season and potentially won the most money on. I don't know. I'd have to go back and check. But them, this feels like a bit of a tall order. Uh, just doing what they've done in the playoffs their their offense their half court offense is really bad um they they're only you know we talked about it a little bit in the slack brandon being pretty anti paolo uh as you know he's basically their only bucket getter um and i just think that is going to be really tough to weather in the playoffs they're a young team with a lot of grit they're great but their defense heavy and that that half court offense that we that I talk about so much is just not there. Um, on the flip side, what you said, the basketball gods sh- should not be shining uh, or smiling on the Cavaliers after what they did. So, you know, and, and we saw what happened to them uh, against the Knicks last season. I think. This is kind of a stay away to me. This is a game to game situation for me. I do like Cavs minus four and a half in game one. Um, I make it, um, you know, closer to eight actually with a home court advantage. Um, that'll probably flip pretty significantly when it goes to Orlando, but game one, I'm, I'm going Cavs. I think I'm staying away from the series price though. For me, I think, uh, my, my first kind of take on it is this should be a series of the Cavs dominate and win four one. And I have a very strong feeling that they are not going to do that. So like there's two questions yeah. you have to ask yourself, which is what is the best version of both teams and how do they match up? And then there is yes, but what is the identity of both teams? And I'll just tell you right now, the identity of the Cavs is like, they're going to make this harder on themselves than they need to be uh, a good example of this, by the way, how about this one? This is, I love the stat I found over on cleaning the glass Cleveland this season versus top 10 defenses, magic or top five, top 10 defenses. Cleveland is nine and 15 straight up okay the orlando magic are 13 and 12 uh the Cavs have the 21st ranked offensive rating versus top 10 defenses yikes um now the problem is just like watts is right that the magic's offensive floor and that was one reason i was ready to fade them if this was nick's magic i was probably going to be like hammering nicks like minus two and a half this smell that would be like a gentleman yeah. to me I, I don't know because it's I feel like Cleveland's going to mess around and they're going to be and somehow we're going to be like, holy shit, like the Magic are, gonna, are taking this thing to seven. Um, Fiddle, I, I think my initial kind of reaction on this is what I want to probably look for is a series spread number on the Orlando Magic, which uh, our producer Tito is actually putting in the chat, literally <laughs> typing as I'm speaking, so I'm waiting for him to get Cavaliers are minus one and a half on the standard uh, shortest juiced line. They're plus 115 Cavaliers minus one and a half. So like even that's an indication. There's not a lot of confidence in the market on the Cavs, right? We'll see where the market goes. Now, I think the probably Cavs are going to take money. I would imagine the Sharps are going to be like, look, Cleveland's better. Like, come on, okay. Cleveland's better here. Yep. So I'm going to be curious where this series ends. Um, but I do kind of think that Orlando is probably going to stick around because I do not trust the Cavaliers to play to their best ability the way that they need to, to keep this a short series. 
I think it's a question of how much we're traumatized by the Cavaliers' last playoff run and how yeah. much we could separate what happened against the Knicks. I just want to quickly touch on that. I know it's a year ago, and I want to give reasons why we should remove it from our mindset, yeah. is that the Knicks completely out-rebounded the Cavaliers. We had Jared yeah. Allen saying that they were out physical or that they played soft or whatever the terminology was. The Knicks were a great rebounding team already who then – the Cavaliers didn't have shooters. They were using Isaac Okoro, who had some good regular season stats, but he was not going to be respected and closed out on. And at that time, the Knicks brought in Josh Hart at the deadline to be an extra rebounder. So they could remove one player from guarding Okoro and bring him under the perimeter and crash the glass. So obviously the Cavs got smacked when it came to rebounding. I think the tune has changed this year. I think Jared Allen is going to toughen up a bit. I think the uh, Cavaliers added Max Struess, which is going to be a huge part of this series. Bang, bang, George Niang is going to help the floor spacing of this Cavaliers team. Karis Levert is playing with a redeemed sense of confidence, made a nice little six man of the year charge when the Cavaliers were playing well this season. Uh, Matt, it's, it's not really a buckets episode unless we're going head to head on quite a few things. I kind of like Cavaliers minus 4.5 game one. I'm thinking about grabbing Cavaliers minus 1.5 on the series price. I agree this should be a 4-1 series. Um, and I wish every year as we do this and we keep gambling on more things and getting more odds available, there's all these new cooler bets. We have series leaders uh, at different things. I wish we could compare series against each other. And I wish I could take Cavs Magic to be the lowest scoring series of round one. There, you want there will be i think uh there will be lowest scoring team of the opening weekend like that that will be a thing that you'll be able to get orlando um, magic yeah orlando magic <laughs> uh look they split the season series and again like i don't to be honest with you i don't necessarily go by what the series outcome is like i will watch all these games this week and then be and then notice what the matchup advantages are because what you'll find a lot of times is like oh they won three one why did they win three one oh because the bench was minus a thousand and they're just not going to play the benches as much <laughs> like that's the that's the solution is like if your bench sucks you know what you do you don't play the bench as much in the playoffs um i hear what you're saying i think one of my problems is just like one we don't know what we mitchell has not looked right in a month and a half and all of the numbers are very concerning, which means that this becomes if he's not that guy, then this becomes more of that like, oh, it's like Mitchell and Garland. And that team is quite honestly kind of sucked this year. Like they've been at their best when it's like Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, one five pick and roll with shooters. That team works when you get the big four on the court. It gets a little messier now they're when they have had all four guys. The record has been good. The point differential has been good. I got to dig in and see like how that does against quality opponents. But like there are some promising numbers on that end. Um, I think one of the things that I'm going to be really interested to hear is obviously the, the, the Magic want to win this in like a rock fight, a shootout or not a shootout, but like a rock fight. They want to win this thing with defense. And that's going to be very difficult. The question I do think is like, just where is the money? Where is the number going to come from? Like where where are they going to get points from? Who's, who's going to be that guy? Like, is there anybody on the Magic that's like, well, you know, if he had a series, I honestly don't know who that is. It's going to have to be like Markel Fultz, which yikes. Which, again, uh, I don't want, I don't, I, I, for me, this is a absolute, I don't want the Magic to win the series. And honestly, if this is what we're going to get, where it's like Magic plus two and a half is minus 275, that's too sharp and there probably is value on Cleveland. This is a good example, like, as I'm reacting live to this, of, of how, hey, uh, I can have my take on it, but if the market is way far ahead of that expectation, okay, well, now you've gone too far, and I want to come back the other way. Um, Watts, you got any thoughts on what we've talked about here? Just to kind of add, I, I want the magic against a good offensive team with no defense rather than a good defensive team with minimal offense like Cavs. And the more I'm thinking about it, I think um, Michael made a good point. This is a better shooting Cavs team. They're still not an elite offense, but I think this is a team that has more experience and is just better equipped to kind of take care of business. I would have to dig a little more on series, you know, spreads. I kind of like minus two and a half just because 
there's a world I think where this isn't even really that close of a series. So go for the value and just kind of bet it game to game from there. That could be a move. Uh, Toby in the chat comments over here on, on youtube.com slash the action network. Cavs are, have a three and 10 against the spread record as a home favorite since the trade deadline. Jesus. <laughs> not, so, <good. laughs> not great, Bob. Um, now <laughs> we'll, we'll have to check and see what that does versus like, okay, how are they versus, you know, teams over 500? Can they just not cover big numbers versus weak teams? We'll have to kind of check all those things out. What are the numbers when they have the guys healthy? I think those are all questions. The Jared Allen question, I think is very interesting here because Jonathan Isaac had some absolutely ridiculous, incredible defensive possessions today. There's also just a, like a lot of possessions where I'm like, mm, I don't know. I think if you probably have sharp movement, you can probably catch Isaac napping. And like, that's going to be a problem. Everyone's going to want to talk about the thunder and their playoff and experience. This magic team has not been there. Jalen Suggs has not been in a playoff series. Markel Fultz has not been in a playoff series. Wendell Carter Jr. Hasn't been in a playoff series. Joe Engels has been in about 7,000 of them because he's a million years old. Um, but in general, like this is, and this Jamal Mosley first time head coach, in a playoff series, yeah. right? Now he's going against JB Bickerstaff, so this might be like the very stoppable force meets the extremely movable object. But I am kind of curious as far as that one. Um, would you agree with me though, Fiddle, that this is probably maybe the toughest one to cap because of so many unknowns that we have, I think, with both teams? Yeah, and I just think the overall health of Donovan Mitchell becomes the hardest one, similar to Giannis, but I think we even kind of know Mitchell's going to play, but what form of Mitchell are we going to get? Uh, if this one becomes tough to cap, which means go game to game, or if you do feel strongly about either direction, play the escalator of the series spread. So if you like the Magic, play them to win it outright. If you like the Cavs, play the minus one and a half. Alter your risk-reward scale so you're risking less and more reward. Make it a small bet, and then roll it over game to game, and we'll see it how it plays out. Uh, we have almost 200 people hanging out with us right now and on Buckets Live. If you're listening right now, take a second, hit that, smash that like button. Do it for me. Do it for me. Smash it. Smash, smash it. it. Give me that. Give me them sweet likes. To give them on there. Somebody asks, uh, Michael Palacios asks, where's Jay Money? Uh, don't worry. Uh, well, Jay's going to be on for our game episodes. <laughs> Jay's going to be on. I will get Jay's. Uh, I will force Jay to come on and give series picks. He's going to be like, I don't want to play that, man. I just want to bet game by game. And. I will force him uh, because that, that is what I do. I will and I will annoy him into giving us some serious picks on those. Um, sixty-one percent of the chat is saying the Pacers will be will beat the Bucks, so I'm definitely on the public Ooh. side there. Sixty-six percent of the chat saying the Magic will beat the Cavs, so it's sharp fiddle on the favorites versus uh, me and the public. Yeah, I don't one. mean to be rude to the chat, but does that make me feel a little bit better? Hey, do you think that this the do you think that the folks here are probably uh, public? Square, no, that's that's, that's square. where I was going with this is that if you're in the Action Network YouTube channel watching the live stream Sunday afternoon at 6 30, <laughs> you're either my grandma or someone who wants to win money betting. So for that reason, you're probably not the public. So a little cause for pause on my end. All right, let's go to uh Mavs Clippers. Again, we'll have a full breakdown on this tomorrow. Um, I have to watch about a bazillion hours tonight. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in Luka Doncic's MVP case, I'm doing one for each. Player, I have Jokic is up, and now Lucas is also up. You can catch that in the Action Network app. I did make a very good faith and completely, like, I put myself in the place of if you are, if I was asked, like, you got to make the case for him and convince me, what does it look like? And I made the strongest possible case that I could for Lucas MVP candidacy. Uh, he should not win, just as, so we're aware. He should not win that award. Um, he might. He might. I bet it, but he should not win that award. Uh, all right. So this one, obviously we've had longer on, so we've got a very full market. Not only do we have a full market on it, but we now have a mature market where a lot of it has kind of where it's evolved on buckets. When this thing locked up last week with Sean little on buckets live, I said, if you want to bet the Dallas Mavericks, you need to get your ass in gear and bet it. And if you want to bet the Clippers, you want to wait because this is going to move towards them. In there is still the majority of books are still holding the Clippers as a favorite, but it has definitely narrowed. And there are at least two books I've seen today who have the Mavericks as favorites. So I, congrats to me. I congratulate. I I appropriately predicted where the market was going to move. Gold star for Matt. Um, <laughs> Jay's in here saying the Pacers of Magic are just happy to be in the playoffs. Um, 
So he's going to be with you on the, on those fiddle Clippers series uh, price on this one. Don't have that right now. Clippers minus one and a half is plus one seventy. Mavericks plus one and a half is minus two ten. So this is definitely juiced towards like Clippers and seven, which is pretty predictable. Series total uh, of number of games is set at five and a half. I'm sure that's juiced into oblivion. Um, Mavericks minus one hundred five. Clippers. Wow, it's minus one hundred five. Mavericks. Clippers minus one fifteen. We have a dime difference on this price right now, and I bet you by the time that we get to when this series tips off next weekend it will be Mavericks favored. I'm willing to go ahead and uh, I would bet on that series movement. Uh, Watts, let's start with you. Game one, Clippers are minus two and a half. God, they're only minus two and a half at home. <laughs> so I know that Kawhi's situation has got to be questionable, but yeesh. Um, where are you at? As you were, you and I were, we're going to go like seven rounds over Mavericks. You came on buckets and you actually like gave a really well-reasoned position on this. Have you evolved anywhere else with how you approach it? Have you bet anything on Clippers Mavericks? Not on this series, no. Um, but I, you know, because I actually like the Clippers in game one. So I will probably either avoid Clippers game one and then if I'm right and they win, come back on the Mavericks uh, to win the series. Or I'll just go for it and say, yeah, I'm taking Clippers game one and 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 go with that same approach. Um you know, based on my projections, there's some pretty pretty heavy value on Clippers in this first game. I think if, you know, we still have kind of questions about Kawhi, he's been in and out mostly, it seems like, for rest. But, I mean, that knee, um, that knee is concerning, man. His, his, he seems to always be in and out with that same issue. Um, and I think, I think that makes me, hesitant about game one but i already have a future on you know game one for the the clippers to be clear uh but i already have a future on mavericks to win the west so um i might just let this ride and and see where we're at i mean it, it's tough we've had some more like you said we this one's kind of been able to marinate i am high on the mavericks in general uh but i also you know realize that they're the, you, as you pointed out very, very many times, they are the the trendy team right now. So don't want to load up too much per se. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to wait till game one is concluded and see where I go from there. Okay. Uh, all right, Fiddles. Uh, fiddle. I don't really have much of any opinion on this game. It's kind of tough. The yeah. series is tough. It's it, I'm a market reader and in a flat consensus market, that's been shifting a little bit towards Mavericks, which you would have expected, which Matt, you called so nicely. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for where to go, which game to play, kind of playing into a flat market. I'd say, keep it small. If you're going to do anything, look to props, um, Maybe evaluate this after I might look to take the game one loser in the series after. And I also might look to take some overs in this series because I do think the Clippers are going to try and play a small ball. And I do think the Mavericks are going to have rim runners. So I do think both offenses should be pretty efficient. Mm. I'd be looking towards Luca to lead the series in rebounds, uh, Gafford to lead the series in rebounds type of props. If I could get a combination of maybe both in a portfolio that still gives me plus odds between the two of them. That would be interesting. We'll have to see where those come up, but you say this one's been the longest and we have the most information and I got nothing for you. I you feel know, like Jay money. What's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clips Mavericks total is two twenty seven and a half um, right now, which feels, I would agree. I, I lean towards the over there. I'll have to do some more on it. Some of the the first kind of tactical stuff that I, I've started finding, and again, we'll get a lot more into this on Monday's episode. One, um, I think this might be a series where Lou can actually go small. That's the irony is I've always been like hammering Ty Lou for his obsession with going small. And this one might be one where I'm like, I don't know, this might actually not be a bad one to go small on. Um, I will say that the Mavericks are definitely going to try and go small. I think with Kleba, they're going to try and space out. They're going to, they will go back to the same kind of approach that they did in, in the series that they've already played. And then they'll try and replicate some of the stuff they did with, with the jazz, right. Where they're going to want to try and get Luca on an Island with um, zoo 
and try and attack him downhill. A lot of it's going to be the Mavericks have built a lot more mechanisms into their offense this year. When I went down and I sat, when I sat down and I watched, I literally watched uh, a thousand possessions of Luka Doncic's offense, like in detail, and then like scrolled through a bunch of other ones. There's a lot more, there's so many more mechanisms they built in the offense to where they were two years ago when it really was just like Luka dribble, 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 shoot, pass. Uh, there's a lot more that they do now with Kyrie Irving that they do with, in particular, actual D- Derek Jones Jr. is very good. Another thing I found in the matchup data, the best defender against Ka- uh, Luka from the Clippers games and it fits the profile of what I noticed when I went back and did a bunch of, of work on who slows down Luka Doncic. Like, what does he have trouble with? It's not, it's, he kills small guards. He kills bigs. What he has trouble with is super long, light foot wings. Guys like Paul George, where they are super long and agile and have speed, but can also just like, the length is what bothers him. It's not size. He doesn't get bodied. He just doesn't like the length on you because you're able to be disruptive on him. I don't know if they're going to be willing to put PG on him. I think it's going to be Terrence Mann. I think he's going to obliterate him in the post. Um, the, the the Everyone's going to talk about like when's Kawhi going to guard Luka. My thing is going to be like when is PG guard, guard Luka? Because PG at his absolute fastball defensively is a motherfucker. He's really good. Um, the Mavs defense has been unbelievable since the trade because Daniel Gafford's rim protection numbers are through the roof. I don't know what to believe about this. I just, I don't know what to believe. Like Daniel Gafford was never, ever a rim protector. Not a sing, not for a heartbeat in Washington was I ever like, oh man, great rim protection from Daniel Gap. No, he was a Washington wizard. So like, why is he all of a sudden this like mega beast? And you could say like, well, the, he's playing for a more competitive team and he's got a better team around him. Maybe, but this was a team that was defensive garbage for years. So why would this be different? A lot of it is, I will, here's what I will tell you. If you look at this and you're just like, Matt, I don't care about your reasoning. I don't care about your opinions. They've been good defensively with Gafford. They have the defense to get it done. Bet Mavs. Because if they can hold up defensively, they can win this series. That to me is the question mark here, is Mavs defense versus Clips offense. The Matt, Luke is off, Luke, Mavs offense is going to cook. Okay, Clippers defense is going to switch. They're going to have success. They'll try different schemes. There's nothing you can really do about the amount of firepower the Mavericks have. The question is going to be whether or not the Mavs defense can hold up. And if you are of the belief that it can, then you should bet Mavericks. So that's can my Can I jump on that word. with one thought? Matt? Yeah. Daniel Gafford's prop is probably going to be about 11 and a half every game. So look how they use Gafford in that first game and get in on it early for games two, three, four, and so on. Uh, if they're pulling Gafford early and playing a Kleba small ball and matching Ty Lue's small ball, then take Gafford's under pretty quickly. Gafford mm-hmm. is going to have to get his 12 points on efficiency and just dump offs near the rim. The way that the uh, Clippers might play him is just going to kind of negate that. So watch how that is. If he's able to overpower and the Mavericks are able to stay big in game one, then don't fade it in game two. But if you see them go away from that quickly, that's going to be one of these series adjustments. All right. One more series. I want to break down here because we don't have the two, seven, one, eight. We'll talk about those later this week. Timberwolves versus Suns. I cannot believe this number. I am. I guess I shouldn't be given the Western conference odds based off of what this power rating would be at full strength in the playoffs. But it is a little jarring to me. Guys, the Suns are minus 115, Wolves minus 105. The Wolves are a very, very, very small dog here. Like, the hold is incredible here. But the Suns are basically favored here. They went 3-0 versus the, versus the Wolves. House them in this game that had stakes for both teams here on Sunday. But the Suns don't have home court. And the Suns are now taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. And the expectation by the market is that the Wolves will go out in the first round. Fiddle, what do you think? Yeah, I don't mean to make it personal here. I'm beaming on the inside right now. I played Suns 25 to 1 a few weeks ago when they were in the play-in. So now seeing this price allows me to work off of that ticket so beautifully. Like I talked, we talked, mentioned earlier in this podcast, you don't want to go into something with a pre-plant to hedge, but when you are confronted with a two seven series where you're getting minus one Oh five on the two and you have a 25 to one on the seven. Now we're talking and now we're initiating that with the numbers in actuality. So 
personally, it was like, oh, I'm immediately going to start to work off of this and take some Wolves tickets. Uh, besides that, I don't really have any strong opinions either direction. The Suns been one of the most frustrating teams that are starting to look really dangerous. They're getting Bradley Steele back out there. He's playing good defenses. He's making his shots. Uh, the Suns look impressive, but I don't know if I'm ready to fade this Wolves team. I'd be looking maybe team total unders on the Wolves side, if anything. Phoenix this season versus top 10 defenses, 15 and 11 with a plus 3.1 point diff. Uh, they are third in offense, sixth in defense in those spots. Well, this is an annoying one. <laughs> this is an annoying spread. A tough one. This is like, tough. This is, yeah, this is going to be. So here, my my kind of gut reaction, again, I got to do a lot of film work on this one. What's Minnesota's entire thing? They're a schematic defense. They take your mechanisms and they fuck them up, right? Oh, we want to run this high pick and roll. Okay, well, we've got the best rim protector in the NBA who can play high, low, middle in pick and roll drop. We have amazing guards that are going to absolutely get over the screens and contest your guy. We have smart weak side defenders that are able to crowd your action. So all of your, you know, whether it's pick and roll, split action, post-ups, whatever, we have all these things that mess up the stuff that you want to do. And the Suns are like, that's cool. Jump shot, go burr. Like, what are you going to do when the guys are just like hitting, hitting tough jumpers all day? So Watts, I think that to me is like the big thing here is, do I love the idea of like, depending on what should be unsustainable jump shooting? No. Is there a team that is better built to do that than the Phoenix Suns? Absolutely not. Like this is the best team to go against that kind of defense because they're just like, we don't need complicated mechanisms. The Suns have some stuff built in, but in large part, like a lot of it is really, Hey, we have like incredible individual players that will force you to bring doubles. And then we will kick out the shooters sometimes. Um, that to me is like the big question mark here on top of the fact that, uh, Nurkic, I think, is going to be able to get behind Rudy Gobert in a lot of these actions. So one problem is that versus Minnesota, ideally, you want to play a small ball lineup and space out Gobert. Put him in the corner, and then that opens up the middle of the lane, even against good uh, perimeter de defenders. You, Phoenix doesn't have that. They they don't have that that lineup in their repertoire. Like they they do not have that kind of I guess technically if you want to go bowl bowl if we want to live in that I was universe, gonna say <laughs> want to live in that universe we can go to bowl bowl not <laughs> um, but in general I I do kind of think that that's what this comes down to is like hey the wolves are really good uh, unless you're just able to hit tough shots and the Suns are like that's what we do so we just hit tough shots yeah this I have the least on this one honestly um, you know kind of what fiddle mentioned again like I, I i just don't really i don't have that sun's ticket i'm not super high on the suns obviously their their ceiling is very you know ceiling is through the roof right but i just don't buy on them long term i think there is value in this particular series but i just I, this is one that i kind of want to just enjoy and and let it let it wash over me without having too much invested and maybe you know play game to game once again so I, I'm I'm kind of staying away from this one for now. Can I say uh, what the market just said on this one, Matt? They just yeah. said the Wolves are a regular season team and the Suns are a playoff, playoff team. We've been telling you all season. We priced the, the Wolves win total at 56 and a half at the All-Star break. We priced the Suns at 48 and a half at the All-Star break. Well, guess what? The Suns are a playoff team and the Wolves are a regular season team. And we're about to show you. So uh, I'm kind of perplexed at this. Might be another situation where it's wait for game one and maybe bet the loser to to uh, instantly win the series. So in the chat, uh, Jay's yeah. in here saying Suns Wolves is going to go seven, and then Nate says I might wait to see who loses the first game so I could bet on them in the second game. This definitely feels to me like a one-one series going going to Phoenix, right? Which that yeah. leans towards Phoenix yep. winning the series because they'll have stolen home court. Um, another thing to keep in mind as you look at these games and you and you approach it that way, um, when the Wolves Suns game one line comes out, uh, Wolves start very very slow, like they and they did again today. But if you do think if you're just like I think they're gonna, I think they will win this game and they'll figure some stuff out. I will say I think there's an advantage to giving Chris Finch like hey Finch has got a week, he's got a, you're giving Chris Finch a week to figure this out. Now he's this is a tough coaching matchup. Like I Vogel was about versus to ask Finch. You who's the who's the premier coach of this matchup, man? Like, oh Vogel my god, you got Finch. Vogel with a title versus Finch, who might be the favorite for coach of the year to the, when the odds open next season. 
Frank is also Vogel's really good about finding edges without getting away from his stuff. So some coaches are really good at, oh, we can't do this at all. Like recognizing very quickly, nope, this isn't going to work and going away from it. And some coaches are like, I want to stick with with this. We got to figure out better ways to make it work. And even if it's not ideal, if it's not great, if we're just winning by a little, we can maybe get by because of these other things that it allows. Um, Finch, I think, is in that camp and, and Vogel's in that camp as well. So it's, I think it's just going to be really interesting to see um, how this matchup, this is a really great coaching matchup, to be honest with you. Uh, all right, before we get out of here, because and this has been awesome. I'm so excited. So many people have joined us today here for Buckets Live. Uh, tomorrow on the Buckets podcast feed, you'll have a breakdown of the 4-5. On Tuesday, we'll have, actually it'll be Monday afternoon, we'll have best bets for you for the play-in tournament games on Tuesday night. We'll have another one on Wednesday, along with the three sixes. Make sure to keep in touch or, or keep locked in for that. We will have Buckets Live this week. I'll have more information on that later. Also, make sure to check out, by the way, if you go to youtube.com slash Network. We're doing these live shows of we have two new shows. We've got a new show, Nothing But Bet, which is amazing. It was awesome. We did it today. We crushed it. Uh, we will also have Action Island this week. Lots of cool stuff. Make sure to check out uh, Action Network on YouTube. Play in tournament games. Okay. Uh, Raheem Palmer, former friend of the show. I guess he's still a friend of the show, former member of the show. Uh, <laughs> he's He loves Hawks. He loves Hawks in this 910. Um, and I and. Yes, it's like, why are we really talking Bulls? Yes, we're talking Bulls. Hawks is a betting show. Bulls are minus three and a half. Money line, Bulls minus 150. Hawks plus 125. Uh, Hawks over under 218 and a half. Fiddle, what do you think on this one? I grabbed the Bulls. I definitely don't like to hear Raheem on the other side of this, grabbing the Hawks side. Uh, Hawks have not really played with a cohesive lineup with Trey now entering the lineup as DeJounte missed the last few games. Of course, they're missing Jalen Johnson and on Kongwu. So I'm going to be on Bulls minus three here. And I hope that they're giving those floor seats to DeRozan's daughter so she could scream at the free throws. Yeah, um, I lean Bulls pretty heavily. We'll see where I get to by the time that I need to do an actual pick on this game. But Watts, I've got this one like... My model is like, no, 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 like the bull shouldn't be favored by that much. Like this is pretty close, but I Atlanta to me, this is a vibes thing, right? This is a narrative thing. And I think it's tough because it's like, are you making up stuff? And I'm like, well, I just I paid a, attention to a lot of details. They had a chance to actually hang in here and try and fight the bulls all the way to the wire for the nine. And you get that nine seed and you have home court in this game, which is extremely important. Nine seeds are three and three and making it into the playoffs. Ten seeds are 0 and six. Six games, I get it, but it hasn't been done before. The Hawks feel to me very much like a team that's like, uh, we'll take the play in money and then we're ready to go. Like, it's it's time. We we gotta get out of here. It's time for us to wrap it up. Watts, I just I have a really hard time being like, yes, the Hawks are gonna go on the road and win an important game. Versus a Bulls team, that's what's really weird. The Bulls are under 500 and not a good team and all this, that, and the other. They cashed my win total over to Ching. But I feel like the Bulls, and even that Knicks game today, it's a perfect example. They hung on and they made it tough. Like, they are the more tough team. And I do think in a one-game environment, that really matters. So I lean Bulls here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to lay the points. I might just take money line on Bulls minus 150. Yeah, I don't think that the Hawks are going to break any records any positive records, right? I know you, like you said, 0 and 6 for 10 seed teams, but th this team is disappointed all season. So, I mean, it would be pretty hoxy of them to all of a sudden win this game and, you know, do something that's never been done, albeit only in a six game sample size. But, you know, you mentioned your model with the Hawks. I, my, I think my model is like one and 10 when it, when it tells me to bet on the Hawks. So they're just one of those teams that is like confusingly worse than they should be. Um, they get Trey Young back. Uh, no Jalen Johnson, as Fiddle mentioned. Um, Okongwu out. I mean, I just don't see any reason to back the Hawks. The The best thing that I've heard about the Hawks, like you said, is that Raheem's on them. But <laughs> I don't personally think there's any reason to back the Hawks. I think if it's it's like bulls are nothing to me. They, like you said, they're an annoying team. They stick around. Um, they'll, they'll play these tough matches. They'll lose these dumb games and then, and then play these tough ones. 
Um, I think I think I probably will take the Bulls minus three. Um, I gotta just look a little bit more into it, but I'm I'm leaning pretty heavy to the Bulls here. And the other Eastern Conference play-in game. Oh boy. The Miami Heat, the reigning Eastern Conference champions in the play-in tournament once again are plus four and a half at the Philadelphia 76ers over under 208 and a half Sixers minus 190 on the money line heat plus 155 um, fiddle Miami has gotten worse and worse and worse. It, like they have not trended upward at any point, um, but Bam out of bios head to head record versus Joel Embiid is superb. They, they have done very well versus Joel this is a great test of one something I've talked about on the show a lot, which is like, do you think the Sixers team is different than the ones before? I have bet them as I believe that they are different, but this is a very good, good starting case of if you're really different, not only are you going to win this game, but you're going to win this game pretty comfortably. You need to smash this heat team. If the Sixers are for real. Yeah. The, the, the difference is Nick nurse. We've talked about a lot of coaching matchups here, N nurse versus Spo in a play in, I mean, Billy Donovan versus Quinn Snyder and the other play. And there are some phenomenal coaching matchups all across the board right now. But I really think for this Philadelphia 76ers team, uh, similar to the Mavericks putting in more outs for Luka, we have more outs and options for Embiid within this offense. The shooting of Buddy Heald, uh, Tobias Harris becomes less invisible when Embiid is out there. Maxi is a clear second star. So I think Embiid is truly the tide that lifts all boats. The, the 76ers took... Uh, the Heat, and they were minus three, I think, in Miami when Embiid returned after that game against OKC. So now going home into the Philly atmosphere and having a more rested and just rolling 76ers team, give me the 76ers. The one thing that concerns me about taking the minus four and a half, because I missed the minus four, uh, I do think this is an underspot. I think this is this this total going 208, 208.5 down to 208. It does scare me to say that you're going to have to pull out that five point win uh, against a Miami Heat team that will play you tough into the wire. So this might be a situation where you go money line, but I do like the 76ers for sure. All right. Lakers plus one versus the Pelicans. Um, I've already hit, I'm already, I've already bet the, like this. Oh, I can't believe it. Okay. So on the one hand, Phil, I really want your thoughts on this one. Cause I think it's fascinating. Um, we just saw these two teams play. The Pelicans were a four and a half point favorite. The Lakers destroyed them again, beat them by 20. So now we have a three and a half point spread movement based off of one, the outcome of this game. And two, the fact that it's like a big game winner go home ish. Like when and you're in the in, when and you're in, I think is a better way to put it um, for the seven seed. For me, it's just like, look, the Pelicans, I do not like they are not good in these in these spotlight games. Whenever the intention is on them, they cannot handle it. Like the Lakers come in with an aggression and intention and an authority. And the Pelicans simply do not match that because their star players are not wired to do so. And like, again, this is all like very narrative. If you want the X's and O's, how about this? Like the Willie Green can't help himself in playing small ball. So Anthony Davis is going to easily put up big points. They don't have anyone that can really contain LeBron because all of their wing defenders are built to defend guards and not large Omega forwards. Um, the Lakers offense has actually been really functional and good over the last two months, especially with Rui Hachimura in the lineup. And the Pelicans pick and roll defense isn't good enough to be able to shut down D'Angelo Russell enough because they don't run D'Lo in 1-5 a lot. Those are all your tactical reasons, but honestly, Fiddle, like my biggest thing here is just like, this is. Do I think that this line should have moved this much? No. Am I going to bet the Lakers anyway? Yes. It's on their dog. I think they're absolutely winning this game. Yeah. So let's just talk about how this line opened contextually to them playing literally today, so uh, Sunday, April fourteenth. When we when we see NBA teams play these back to back mini baseball series, and we often see it. it they're trying to reduce travel in the NBA. So they're stacking together these sandwich games. You'll see it for the next few seasons. And you could kind of blanket apply this trends approach to betting to these situations. But when the second game opens right now, it's Pelicans minus one against the Lakers. It is often a bit of an overreaction that overcompensates for the results of what just happened. So the Lakers were a three and a half point underdog going into today's game. 
they end up uh, winning outright. So the line moves two and a half points. The line for the Lakers and Pelicans game in game 82 of the regular season was based off of an 81 game sample size that has a lot of relevant and smart information. And it's a closing line that got there after 24 or 36 hours of being open because we didn't have games on Saturday. So we had action to then sharpen the line to where it was supposed to be. Now it reopening at a minus one, it's a bit of an overreaction to me. Uh, it's a bit saying that's it's gone too far. But at the same time, with what Matt's saying, uh, the Pelicans sort of disappear in these limelight games. And you don't know if it's narrative or if it's actually a real thing. If in the NBA, these tend to be real things. That's why we're actually having a podcast and not just claiming and crowning the Boston Celtics right now, because we are traumatized by the history of some of these teams in big spots. And that's the Pelicans. So a lot of words to say, I got no bet for this play in game as of yet, but uh, you could use that strategy moving forward, or you could just tail Matt's Lakers here and take LeBron because the Pelicans are the new LeBron Toronto Raptors. I want to be like, the you know the better in me wants to be like no 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 like take the pelicans they're a home team here uh by the way seven seeds are six no and making the playoffs so very good at least for the pelicans to be able to get into the playoffs i just i you know part and i will say this is definitely like a, a bias thing being at that ist game in vegas it was a big reason why i was on lakers today i was just like oh there is a very big gap here between the seriousness of these two teams like the lakers are not a good team but they're a serious team the pelicans are a pretty good team but they are not serious whatsoever that's kind of my feeling watts yeah i feel that i there was before that ist game there was an interview with zion and he looked like i'm not making any speculation to me he looked like he just like hot boxed a car with uh Cheech and Chong and whoever else you want to add in there, <laughs> Snoop Dogg. It, he he just looked like so out of it. And then they just got absolutely destroyed. I was on the Pelicans in that game, saw that interview and was like, I just lost that bet. And sure enough, I did. However, that next game, the Pelicans absolutely smoked the Lakers. The ne- They played uh, like New Year's Eve, a couple weeks after that IST game, one by 20. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, all of my basketball watching ability is telling me don't take the Pelicans. They're not serious. But I also have my model has this in a range that would absolutely like I I don't know. I'm an idiot for not taking the Pelicans. I kind of kind of feel like I want to just take the Pelicans and not overthink it too much. And uh, maybe that's underthinking it. Who knows? But or we could just go with a regular season banger and go uh, Pelicans first half. That that could be a good bet. I'm always in for that. I'm not going to do that because the Pelicans hate me with that bet. <laughs> yeah, you don't take it. I'll take it. How about that? I don't take it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say, by the way, I do make this Lakers uh, minus one, about uh, between one and a half and two. So I've, okay. I've got model edge on this as well. Last one. Let's do this one really quickly. Uh, Warriors in the 9-10. They are favored on the road versus the Kings, despite the Kings having one season series uh, and giving the Warriors a lot of trouble through the years. Uh, Warriors minus one, Warriors minus 112 money line, Kings minus 104, over under 227 and a half. Um, I'll have to do the work on it, but Fiddle, I, I think I'm probably going to be on Kings here. I don't necessarily think that the Golden State Warriors deserve this uh, this level of respect. Now, model, I've got this pick them, so it's not like a big edge, but I don't know necessarily that uh, the I just think the Warriors are getting a little too much respect here from this number i'm not sure they should be road favorites even if it's just a point yeah i i completely agree with that movement through the one mat just want to quickly address it one is not that common of an outcome in nba basketball games and obviously zero is outright impossible especially in a play-in game so we're gonna see some movement through there and it shouldn't be like sounding too many alarms of like that's a sharp side it's more going to be based on handle of these books coming in when you get movement through the ones Kings probably should be the minus one here, but you got to be hesitant with Monk and Herter both out and how their offense has collapsed a little bit. And this Warriors late season surge, uh, they've been playing well since they got Chris Paul and Steph Curry back in that like March ankle sprain. So I, this is another tough one to bet. The Battle of North Cal, a short 40 minute bus ride between the two. I wonder if the uh, Kings atmosphere is a bit 50-50 Warriors split for this one. 
I don't know, man. Kings got a, got a pretty good home court, but they haven't been good at home this year. So we'll see what yeah. kind of happens. We'll break down these games in detail. You can catch those in the feed of tomorrow. We'll have an episode on that. We will also have the four or five breakdowns for both sides of the East and West. You can catch Fiddle in the Action Network app and on Twitter at Fiddle's Picks. What a great, what a great, great name. Fiddle's Picks. Fiddle's Picks. <laughs> uh, you can catch Watts at NBA Watts. I'm at HP Basketball. My thanks to everybody who joined us here on Buckets Live. Make sure to go to youtube.com slash the Action Network and subscribe. Smash that like button if you're watching for us right now. You can catch the, the full version of the show on YouTube if you want to as well. We'll be back tomorrow getting started for the NBA playoffs. My thanks to Tito for working on a Sunday, putting the show together. My thanks to Tito. Tito's the man. Uh, my thanks to David Payne, our producing crew, getting us up on the audio side. We will talk to you tomorrow as we begin preparation in full for the 2024 NBA playoffs. Till then, let's get buckets. <laughs>